I think this is the worst cold I've ever had in my life. And that's saying something. So please, bear with me. The show goes on. And it starts officially right now. Out of the darkness and into the light, it is a flashlight review in TMP. And it's 2014, not 2009, when I posted a lot of flashlight reviews. Why the change, nothing? Why no more flashlight reviews? Well, as you see, there's a lot going on, a lot of subject matter to cover. So it's hard to fit it all in the mix. That's one reason. And another reason is the models I've reviewed already are still excellent. I mean, the ones I've covered are so good, there's really no reason to upgrade to current models if you want total honesty. There you have it. I mean, compared to old lighting products, I'm talking older technology, the newer ones blew it away. But within the last four to five years, we've seen small percentages of capability. As far as the throws, the durability of the lights, there's not much change in the overall picture. So there's your answer. But occasionally, I will get motivated to do another light review. And as you know, there's a lot of great online resources for the flashlight reviews. Really, really good ones. They can do it a lot better than I can. They have a lot more interest in getting into the nitty gritty. No, I don't do that anymore. This is going to be a short review, relatively speaking. Because that's what TMP is like. Down and dirty, how good is this light, the 4.7's Maelstrom MMRX? I would say it's outstanding. That's how good it is. By the way, that yellow, that orange tape is mine. So I can find it in my gear bag, which has a black interior. Where this one was running, it's just a quick way. Just in case you're wondering. This is something you probably can't afford. Unlike, I don't know, a $2,600 FN17S. <laughs> Some guys lament the fact that I review some expensive stuff. I review all value levels. If at its price level, level it represents a certain level of value, capabilities, I might review it. Let's start off with size and weight. I think this is a compact light for what it can do. Extremely compact, and I am motivated to bring it to you as an option for your purchasing. 5.2 ounces, and that's with the battery. Which is a proprietary 3.7 volt 2600 milliamp with PCB 18 or 18650 compatible cell. There you go. Four sevens. We'll talk more about this here in a second. These are about $15 if you want to buy them from four sevens. Last time I checked. So actually, that's adequately priced. Great size and weight. You could use it as a weapon light, kind of jumping into, you know, POU, I guess. Versatility. I didn't try it as that though. Didn't have time, but I'm sure it'd do well. It's double shock mounted in there. I think it would do fine. How about on a 50 caliber BMG? Nothing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Duty light, medical light, just an EDC light. Probably a little bit big for that. Let's see what I got clipped in my pocket. This is never made up. It's just what I bring to the table. Oh, so got the ProTac 2 AAA running. Heavily worn. Boba Fett wear. Sick. Great light. Love the Prions too. They're excellent. Is it still called Prion? I think it is. They changed all their nomenclature a few years back. I'm still confused. MMRX is this version. The Regen. Construction is typical 4.7's outstanding quality. That is to say it's excellent. 6000 series aluminum body. Medium grip knurling. Granted my tape kind of gets in the way there. There you go. Crenellated bezel. Stainless steel variety. I like having a strike option. It can be a self-defense tool. You can also tell when it's on if it's uh, face down so you don't melt your light. You can swap it out with the included matte black bezel. There you go. I have this in a parts bag appropriately labeled so I know what came with which light. It is waterproof and no, I don't test that very frequently. Not anymore. I mean, all the lights were passing so regularly. It was just kind of a gimmick really. IPX4, IPX8, most of the lights have. This one will be as waterproof as any realistic use would need. From experience with 4.7 lights. That is to say, they do great underwater. There is no pocket clip with this light. It comes with the included holster. So if you need a pocket clip for a light this large, you're going to be out of luck. Look elsewhere. Future versions may have it. They may integrate it, but I don't know if you need it. In hand, it feels small 
That's what she said. <clears throat> I know. But no, it is a compact light. How about brightness, throw, and beam? It's running in a smooth, deep reflector, a Cree XML2 in cool white. Like that right there. It's a throwing light, which I like. Along the way, I'm going to show you outside what this light did as we took it out into a remote area, highway, and that's what she did out there. Whoa. Smooth reflector, and I'll just use factory specifications for throw. If you want to know more, you can look it up. Again, a lot of online resources. Moonlight mode is one lumen. They say 35 days, low 25 lumens, 40 hours, high. 150 lumens, 8 hours. And then you get a max burst at 800 lumens for one minute. And then 400 lumens for two hours. I didn't test all those. Most of them I did. There are some special modes you can access. Strobe, SOS, beacon high, beacon low. I do like the beacon for an outdoor light for locating a tent. You go and do some water filtering halfway across the lake there. You can see how to navigate back on your raft. Been there, done that a couple times. Kind of cool. How about programming this thing? Well, the UI on all these lights is always evolving. That is, it's changing. This one is a little bit innovative in that you have a micro USB connection accessed by unscrewing this portion here. And then you'll plug this in either to your USB port on your computer or the included recharger. This is also labeled so I don't get confused. Lots of lights, lots of rechargers. Do you have that going on too? You got like, what, 100 rechargers floating around? You don't know what goes to what. We should just be universal. Oh wait, this is micro USB. You can plug it in in any compatible charger. So what you'll do, and if you get confused, it's right here in the instructions, is while it's plugged in, you can actually turn the light on and it will blink a certain number of flashes in low mode and it will tell you what configuration it's in. The default mode is configuration 2, which means you can access max and low. And then to change it, you will click on and off the button on the back. This is a tactical switch that's uh, fitted on this one. And then it will switch over to configurations as shown here. I'll just show you. won't say them all. The one I like is a default. That's the best. Those are the ones you're most going to use, max and low. If I'm going to go out in the woods, maybe, just maybe, I would put configuration four. You know, so I have a strobe mode. The moonlight mode is only available in five, and in the downer of that is you're going to have to cycle through them all. And the way you, here comes plot thickening here, as I often say. The way you'll cycle through those, oh, by the way, once you program it, you leave the switch off, and then it will remember it. Again, this is uh, the instructions right here. Let's do it. And what I was going to tell you is the plot's thickening. This light, for whatever reason, and i got to do this tabletop, I'm not going to wait on it anymore, is stuck in a single mode. Sorry, it is. I mean, what I should do, so default, I should go to high. There's high. Cool. Turn it off. Within one second, come back on. It should be low. It's not doing that. It's just staying in high. So I was like, man, why is this light doing that? It's running the proprietary battery that it comes with. And charging, it did the same thing. So I was like, well, maybe I can charge it and then I can change modes. So I tried to change modes and it wouldn't do it. Here's some video of that. Okay, so make sure the battery's oriented right. It's only going to turn on if it's oriented in the proper configuration. That is positive side up. Yeah, did that, plugged it in, wouldn't change. <laughs> now, with the MMRX, you do have two different switches that are included. So you may be saying, especially if you own this light, hey, nothing, why don't you swap out the switches? Maybe it's that switch. Well, I did that too. And I had to do kind of a time consuming pain in the butt errand to do it because I didn't have these snap ring pliers. Went to AutoZone, which, by the way, is my favorite auto parts store. Love it. They give military discount, by the way. <clears throat> Bought these, and the reason they're necessary is because to swap the switch out, you got to do this. This is actually a plastic shield that you can take out. Screw that. There we go. By the way, this is helpful if you decide to run a non 47s power cell in there. For instance, here's a Tenergy 18650. So positive side would go here, but you got to be careful because inside this light, 
is both the positive and negative contacts towards the top. Right in there. See them? This is a positive side on the interior. On the exterior is the negative side. If you're to run just a standard 1860 cell, you might short those out. So what you would do is take this plastic spacer out of the tail cap. It does nothing down there. Not needed, in other words. Drop it in here. Now you see how it looks in there? And what that does is it shields that negative contact from the top. And that way I can run a normal, for instance, Tenergy. Hey, maybe I'll swap modes in if I put a different power cell in. Nope. Didn't do it. By the way, I tried this one too. It rattles, but it still worked. 176, 70, 1600 milliamp. I just had that. It worked. I would just stick with the proprietary ones right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was I telling you? Swapping the switch out. Okay, so I did it. Ran the Aaron, spent wasted time getting it, and I unscrewed this, swapped it out, and it's not that big of a deal. You just unscrew this retention cap in here, swap the switches out. It didn't help. There's the bottom line right there. It just did nothing. I wish I had better news because I think the light is awesome. There might just be something weird with this light. I just don't know. And by the way, it's the second one I had. The first one. I got to bring this to the tabletop because I'm honest with you guys, I had problems. I was doing some drop testing on it, <clears throat> like hardcore onto the concrete, and it just wouldn't stay on. It kept turning off, doing this, doing that. It was just an unreliable light. I, and I was like, uh, I got to give four sevens a chance on this. Sent it back. They sent me this one. And this one's good, but I'm just stuck in a single mode. I don't know what to tell you, dudes. I wish I had better news for you. Normally, it's going to have a protruding clicky switch on it, forward clicky switch. This is a tactical one, once again. I do like that they have swappable tail caps, um, or swappable, not tail caps, but uh, the switches on them. Now, if you have other 4.7's products, you might experiment. You might put other tail caps on. I didn't do any of that. I do have a lot of 4.7's lights, but the, the question remains, why? My favorite is the tactical one. That is a non-protruding switch. That way, I can tail stand with this sucker like so so it's very helpful on a table as a, a flashlight tent or something like this as far as the beam goes and the capabilities of it you've been seeing it throughout the video very impressive great spill beam it's clean there's no artifacts it has outstanding throw i would say usable about to 75 yards i would as i've said in other reviews cut the burn time and cut the throw about in half whatever the manufacturer says <laughs> I don't know if four sevens does this, but a lot of others do this. Oh yeah, the light's good out to 200 yards. Uh, no, it's not. Maybe 75. I mean, if you're using it as a weapon light, trying to identify something prior to the shoot, yeah, I've said that a lot before. Uh, track record. Well, I told you. I had one defective light, and this one's stuck in a single mode. But I still like the light. It is a con current controlled light, by the way, in case you're wondering. No re uh, digital regulation, I believe. Uh, that is anti-reflective glass lens, waterproof, tough, hundred dollars, and it is backed by what has been in the past excellent 4.7 service. At the top is my recommended place to purchase it. But we're not fancy. What if I get one that's stuck in a single mode? I don't know. Talk to 4.7s, and maybe I did something wrong. I just don't know, man. That's my review. Now I gotta go to sleep.